Welcome to the Legacy Leaders Podcast. Are you doing the best for your client to help them create their legacy? Are you creating a plan that goes far beyond finances to help people ensure that it becomes the driving force behind all decisions? On this podcast, hosts Katie Beth Hand and Stan Miller will help you with growing your practice and your client's peace of mind. Together, they bring the best and brightest minds to share with you how to help your clients develop their best legacy. And now, here are your hosts, Katie Beth and Stan. Welcome to the Legacy Leaders Podcast. I'm your guest host, Stephen Stepp, and today my special guest is Kristen J. Wilson from K.J. Wilson Law, just outside of Washington, beautiful Arlington, Washington, I believe. And um, Kristen, uh, thanks very much for being our guest today. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. Awesome to have you. So um, we'll get right into it for our listeners. Um, And um, one of the things I I knew you grew up in Detroit and you've been practicing for a number of years outside of uh, Washington and um, especially important for our listeners, you are an estate planning attorney, and that's your your primary focus, which is awesome. Um, and also, you know, like the whole idea of the legacy planning that that we do, and Stan Miller does as well. And um, I wanted to find out how you first decided to get into estate planning. Well, um, it was I would say it was by accident, but also by design. Um, and what I mean by that is. I believe I was always headed in this direction. I just didn't really know it. So um, I, after graduating from undergrad, I moved to Los Angeles. I was interested in working in the entertainment industry. And that led me to want to go to law school. I was mostly interested in kind of the advocacy part of being a lawyer. Um, Wasn't really into the, I guess, the academic study of law just for the sake of academic study. I just wanted to help people. And so when I got to law school, I took every entertainment law related course I could find. But because I was in D.C., there weren't that many. So I had to fill my schedule with other things that I was actually interested in. And I found tax law. Um, I know we're talking about estate planning. We're going to get there, I promise. Um, (laughs) I've always been a numbers girl. So I fell in love with tax law, ended up in a tax LLM program. And the first day of the LLM program, we had sort of an orientation, you know, where they kind of tell you, This is rigorous. You're going to be miserable, but you'll be well-educated. So just hold on. And part of that orientation was um, explaining the certificate programs. Now, they had a certificate uh, regarding estate planning, and I had already decided that I was way too cool for wills and trusts. And I only went because I made a friend on the first day, and I wanted to, you know, have do an act of friendship and solidarity. But when I got there um, and I heard the professors talking about estate planning from the perspective of tax strategy and what an impact that can have on how much we get to transfer financially to the next generation. It just, I was enchanted. So I'm in the LLM program. I sign up for the certificate program and basically the rest is history. I fell in love with estate planning and I'm so glad that I gave it a second chance because it wasn't what I thought it was. Um, And I love what I do now. Yeah, I think it's interesting what you said on two levels. Number one, kind of by accident, right? I think most of the great things that happened to us were kind of like by accident, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm here in Los Angeles, so the idea of uh, working with uh, entertainment and stuff, um, you know, I I can see how that would be uh, a lot more alluring than (laughs) estate planning. Um, And I think it's really amazing that you also have a master's in taxation. So I think that's really cool. and, And uh, and the fact that you realize you could do more to help people save taxes by making sure they had their estate plan done right than you possibly could on, you know, even like individual income taxes on a, on a yearly basis where you might be able to save an individual $10,000 on their taxes, right? But yeah. you might be able to save them a million dollars. That's more, right. Obviously, easily in a state in proper estate planning and so you're saving way more money you know for the individual and for the family right family. Um, i've learned over the years working with sand and everybody just how important it is on the, the whole um you know to think generationally and a lot right. of times people will start out you know 
think I want to take care of myself. I want to take care of my kids. And then beyond that, they don't even really think about it. Um, and it's and it's true. Rich people plan for generations, right? Right. Um, and poor people plan for next Friday night. And I, I've always kind of had that in the back of my, you know, head. So I, I think that's uh, that's great. How did you decide to go to law school to begin with? How did you decide law was even where you wanted to go? Um, so that's also an interesting story. I, I had a friend who, um, was a songwriter and she wrote, you know, a, a hit song. Um, it ended up traveling basically around the world. And, but when it first was released, she was not receiving the proper credit for her song. And, uh, I was there when she wrote it. And so, and she was a good friend of mine. And so this was just, I really, really wanted to help her. And I had re read books about um, publishing because, you know, I was in LA for that reason. I was interested in the uh, entertainment industry, specifically in music. And so I'd read books about copywriting and publishing and I had the knowledge. Um, I knew that she had a right to, you know, certain um, uh, credit for that song in addition to just being paid for the work that she'd done. But I realized that I didn't have the license, the le literal legal license to help her. And that really frustrated me. And so, um, and the other thing was, you know, just hanging out in that industry, I realized that at the end of the day, when all the talks are over and the meetings are over, everybody looks to the lawyers. All of the, you know, the senior VPs and the C-suite folks, they're all like, okay, well, we're gonna look over this with our attorneys. We'll talk to our attorneys and we'll get back to you. Well, let's call the attorney and see what they think. And so it just uh, piqued this interest in me. And um, that was the main impetus for me to go to law school. I knew that there were other people that were similarly situated where they may be new to the industry, they may be young, but they are extremely talented and they hold something of value. But if they don't have people who are willing to advocate on their behalf, um, then, then they're lost and they'll continually be taken advantage of. And so that was the initial um impetus but I'm you know I think I'm still in the area of helping people who may not know what they hold that's of value and helping them to protect that so it kind of it's kind of still aligned in a, in a weird way yeah no I think it's uh again uh, by accident right you were yeah friend and and you do you do the rules but you couldn't exactly go to court for them right <laughs> right um and and so you say well I need to be in a situation where if it does get if it needed to go to court, I could yeah. I could help them legally and, and right. you know, I think that's great. Um so in your practice now, um, what would you say is a, a, a an ideal client or if not ideal, maybe your typical client where you're able to help? Yeah, I think a typical client is tough because I've um, been blessed to see a wide range in terms of you know demographics, age, family structure. Um, I think that I uh, enjoy working with people who understand the value of estate planning, uh, regardless of their age or what their family looks like. They understand that this can be something that has a great impact on the next generation. Um, I also like working with people who have a dream or have the courage to dream, to look into the future, to engage their imagination and think about what can I do with what I have in my hands right now um, that can serve those who come after me. And for some folks, you know, we have some people are married with children and it's kind of easy to think about, OK, these are my kids and this is what I want for them. For others who may not have children or who have a non-traditional family structure, um, we get more creative and we think about, okay, well, do you have godchildren? Do you have nieces and nephews? Do you wanna plan for your parents? Um, do you wanna plan to um, have a beneficiary that might be an organization, for example, maybe your church or a charitable organization that you've worked with or, or a cause that you feel strongly about? And so I really like working with clients who are willing to just go there in their imagination to get creative um, a lot of people approach estate planning for the documents, which is fine. You know, we really legally, that's what we need. We need the documents in place. But I like to say that estate planning doesn't begin and end with documents. So, you know, if you talk to me long enough, you'll hear me say things like legacy 
planning and talk about, I'll use the word imagination, I'll use the word dream. These are things that come up uh, regularly with me and with my clients. Um, and I also enjoy working with clients who value education. I spend a decent amount of time explaining uh, estate planning to my clients, I think it's really important that you understand not just what documents you need, but also why you need them, how to use them, how they function. And so, um, you know, working with me, we're going to talk about them. Uh, and for some people, they're like, I don't want to hear about that. You know, they'd rather just sign the things and kind of put them away in the safety deposit box. But um, my my favorite clients are those who are, you know, really engaged with learning about estate planning and how this affects their family. Excellent. Yeah, I think it's I think it's great. You want them to understand. You know, just to have a, a book of papers and they put it in their, you know, in a drawer somewhere at home. And they're, okay, my estate planning is you know is done. Um, so I, I really like that approach. Um, when with your work with clients so far, is there a particular client that stands out where it was like an unusual situation and you felt kind of like superwoman and came in and saved the day where otherwise it would have been some kind of catastrophe? Um, I don't think there's been anything that I'll say dramatic yet. Um, <laughs> I'm ready for it when it comes to okay, I will say that I have uh, been in the position to assist with um, preparing documents for people who know that their transition from this earth is coming sooner than later. Um, and I think it requires uh, a different type of empathy and, um, you know, to be handled delicately. Um, but also I found that those people uh, approach a state plan, they're some of the bravest people. Um, they are clear headed about what they want um, and, uh, and they're thinking about the next generation already. They're not thinking about themselves anymore. It's not so much of a you know, I'm just planning for me, or like you said, planning for next Friday, no matter what it is that they have, they're thinking about how they can help others. And um, I really respect that. Yeah, no, I, I found that to be true for myself. I happen to be 66. And so mm -hmm. I, I've gotten to the point where it's like, I'm not going to live forever either. I I, I need to do the, more of this type of planning. And in fact, I'm, I'm working with Stan right now on, on, on some things along that nature. But, and I think it's great that you want them to to fully understand um, what they're doing. This is this document, and that's what's going to help you with with that. And 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 I'm sure you've seen all kinds of um, crazy or silly situations, you know, come up. One one estate planning attorney recently um, was telling me that um, he started asking his um, husband and wife clients um, if there was anything in particular that they maybe had never had discussed. With each other, um, that was of concern. They wanted to know about the now. Now that they happen to be sitting with an estate planning attorney, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe it could come up. And one of them that came up a lot, but that people had never discussed. Most of the time, had never discussed was a husband and wife not wanting to, especially if they had a significant estate, not wanting to know that if something happened to them, that the other one could get remarried. Mm -hmm. And that other one dies. And now everything that they worked their whole life for is going to the second or third wife or the second or third husband. And with one particular one, it was very funny to said, I think it was Stan Miller himself had a, a similar thing where he asked his wife that question. And, and she said, I do not want to know that half of what we bill is going to go to that 27-year-old stewardess from Southwest. <laughs> and he had to think about did I ever have like an extraordinarily long or deep conversation with a <laughs> and then he makes a joke I said I think it was Delta but man, anyway <laughs> um, and, 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 and he said if they don't answer that question within eight seconds when the definitive no um, if they've thought about it and they don't want that to happen and it's an example of what can come up with good proper estate planning because you can do that as, as mm -hmm. you can you can make clauses that um make sure that doesn't happen and right. i thought that was uh you know really brilliant on 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 all of their parts agreed and again agreed. a lot of times they've never discussed it or they've joked about it but they right. never really in front of a an estate planning attorney you know thought to brought it up or or, or bring it up so that's awesome 
Um, are there are there some common issues that you find with your clients that are, are kind of like that? Maybe they never thought that you could do something like that. And then once they talk to you and they realize that they can, it's like an aha moment for them. Oh, yeah. I think um, probably top of the list is, um, you know, back to the people who have non-traditional family structures. Um, so, for example, uh, you have the cousin that moved in and you kind of treat them like a child, but have never really adopted them. Um, I think a lot of people either haven't considered that without estate planning, the law is not really set up to treat that person like your child and, you know, maybe divide the estate equally. Um, but also, if they have considered it, they don't know that estate planning can help you um, create your own family or design, define for yourself what family means, what children means. Um, now, there's, you know, of course, there's limitations. We have to do this within the confines of the law. But in terms of how you want your estate to be distributed, you have a lot of power. And I think most people don't know how much power they kind of leave on the table when they don't do estate planning. Um, so similarly, being able to choose um, your healthcare advocate, being able to speak in advance about how you want your body to be cared for if you're unable to speak for yourself at a particular time, being able to put that in writing and then name someone to advocate on your behalf. In addition to that, um, there's so much that we can do. There's so much power that we have when we use these documents properly and when we, and you know, the ways that we can customize them are almost endless. Again, as long as we're in the confines, within the confines of the law, but um, there's so much that we can do to make each document almost as unique as the person that's signing it. Got it, got it. And when you are working with uh, the clients and they're obviously coming to you and they're looking for your advice and your help and their education and their understanding, um, is it, what would you say is your biggest challenge um, in either um, in either getting them to move forward, right? Like mm -hmm. do everything and actually get them things into the trust. We hear a lot of times where an estate planning attorney will, they'll do the will and they'll do the trust, but then they actually don't do a very good job of making sure that those assets are actually placed in the trust. Because without doing that, it's just, it's actually meaningless. Yeah. It's actually more than meaningless because it was a waste of everybody's time and money. And now it's not even going to happen the way they they thought. So again, is there, um, and that's just one that I've seen over and over again, but maybe you have your own in terms of a, a challenge that, that you see on a consistent basis that you wish maybe it was a little easier yeah, I think that um, improperly funded trusts or, or trusts that aren't funded at all is is a big one. Um, it really just gives you a super expensive stack of paper. Um, and so that's one. And, and, you know, I'm happy to check in with clients to make sure that they're um, remembering to, to fund their trust. And do, I mean, there's work to be done. It's not... Um, it's not over once we sign the documents. There's still work to be done to maintain your state plan to make sure that it works the way we intended it to. Um, but I think another uh, challenge or difficulty is, you know, estate planning can be a really emotional process for a lot of people. And I think um, it, it's tough for folks, for some people, to face their mortality in a way. And so one of the things that I've been focused on is kind of reframing this conversation. Um, most people, I think the common idea about estate planning and wills in general um, is, is focused on death. It's what happens when I die. And for some people, they're excited to plan so they can have, uh, you know, kind of ease some anxiety about what happens when they die. For other people, they don't want to talk about death. And in some cases, it's even like a superstitious you know, belief underlying that. Um, and for some people, it's just really emotional to think about the situation that might occur where they, you know, predecease their spouse or thinking about their children being in this earth without them there to take care of their kids. So um, that's one challenge of kind of just allowing people space uh, to feel the feelings and then helping them to kind of walk through that and also reframe the conversation from one that's about death to one that's focused on life. And so not only, you know, the life of the person who was doing the planning, 
but also the lives of others. So what impact do you want to have on the lives of your, your family members, of your beneficiaries, whoever you choose them to be, your spouse, your parents, your children? Um, and when we reframe that conversation, I think the it gets a little lighter. It gets a little easier to go through the actual technical aspects of planning. Um, and I think another one is just dealing with anxieties around finality. I've found that there are clients who start the process and then they want to read the documents again and they want to look at them again. And they're like, wait, I want to change something. And feeling like once they sign the certain document that, that everything is you know written in stone and can never be changed. And so I'm often... Um, reminding them that this is something that we're going to cut this you know a living plan we're going to come back to this every year we're going to look at it again relationships will change um, your wishes will change your family structure will change and we'll continue to update your estate plan as your needs are updated basically by life so um so those are two of the biggest challenges that i think uh that i face with clients yeah i've heard that from several of the attorneys that we've than either, um, and, and I, I've had it myself where, you know, thinking about your own death can, can be a, you know, um, a negative and certainly something you don't want to spend a lot of time on or a whole day with an attorney with or, yeah. um, and, and, and the things that come up and, and just dealing with mortality. Right. And I, I think you get to, um, it's probably, easier when you're in your 60s than than right. you know, 40s or 50s and uh, I remember when I was 40 I was like uh, it was like the last thing on my mind is like I don't want to talk about that uh, I'll set up a will I'll do it online I'll take care of it you know yeah. in an hour or tomorrow um and and hope that you know um and, and you know hope for the best right right um, <laughs> so for me the more I learned about probate I was like I don't want to do that I don't want to subject the rest of my, my family to that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I want it to be much cleaner and easier that I've seen probably to last for, you've probably seen longer, you know, for years. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, think of how much good could be done and how much easier it could have been, you know, just with the proper planning. So um, so I, I see both death and 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 also the, feel, the feeling that it's, you know, it's final, right? When we signed the last paper, there's no going back. There's no changing. There's no, uh, you know, because things do change. Um, I was speaking with one attorney recently, and the person that it was a state planning attorney also, and they had one family where two of the four children had died since the last time they did their will, and they had things, um, and they had like a large CD, and it was, um, they thought they were being clever by naming themselves and then contingently, you know, all four children. But now only two of those kids were going to get it because the other two weren't there. And then that would have disinherited the next generation as well, right? And it was only solved by the other two agreeing, you know, no, no, if that happened, you know, we would share it. We would understand and that we would know what our parents would. But sometimes you might not even know that. And, and or, you know, crazy things happen when people die. Right. In terms of, no, that's mine. No, that's fine. No, that yeah. was, you know, especially because every situation is different. Maybe there's a child that was helping with the, you know, with the client, you know, with the, with the person and, and uh, they feel they're entitled to more. So I, I've, I've seen, uh, personally seen it, you know, kind of run the whole, um, gamut. Um, lastly, I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes talking to you about the kinds of things that were, um, beyond the paperwork. And beyond the financial part, um, and assuming they get all of that right, where um, uh, maybe particular situations that you remember, or just areas that you generally try to help people in terms of going beyond those things and helping them even create a, a bigger legacy. And I say that because I think that's where the fun gets, right? That's yeah. where they say, oh, my, I get to share all the pictures and videos that we. You know, to put them all in one place that's accessible. And now with the technology, um, there's a company guy I know that's called Legacy Box. And they'll do all that for you. They'll take all those old 35 millimeter pictures and all the Polaroids and all the other stuff. And they'll put it into a, a real nice collection that can be shared as easily as a link, you know, on the computer. Whereas otherwise, the stuff might just get thrown away or 
certainly not remembered in the same way. And I think when we can add those kinds of things to the, the process, it makes it more fun and more enjoyable and more personal, um, you know, for the client. So I'm curious on if you had any particular situations or just in general, the kinds of things that, that you um, go above and beyond the paperwork um, to help people with their legacy. Yeah, I love this question because um, I think that one of the biggest min misconceptions that people have about estate planning is that um, it's just for rich people and it's just about money. And I believe that there are so many other aspects of wealth that have nothing to do with financial transfer. Um, you know, I like to say, if you have a life, you have something worth planning for. Uh, there are people that will come after us who care about um, our stories, our traditions, um, our skills and talents that we can pass on, any personal convictions, our faith, our identity and cultural pride. There's so much that we can pass on. Um, and I have one client in mind in particular where she was planning, uh, she and her husband were um, creating a trust and they had a young child, a very young child who I think was maybe a toddler. And in her trust, she wanted to outline um, in great detail how she wanted her child to be raised if something were to happen to both her and her husband you know, simultaneously or just at some point, both of them were unable to care for the child. She wanted to leave very specific instructions and, you know, work together with the trust because some of the things would need to be financed. And, you know, you think about um, maybe education for the child or providing for extracurricular activities. But uh, two things stood out to me. Um, one was her culture. It was really important for her that her child um, participate in holidays and traditions that were common in her culture. And I was not that familiar. And so um, I can imagine that whoever, you know, ended up taking care of her children, if something were to happen to her, might not be familiar or it might not be important to them. So it was important for her to say, hey, this is a value of mine and I want my child to grow up with these values as well. Um, and then the other was her faith. And so she was very specific about how she wanted her child to be raised in her particular religion and even down to what she wanted them to be taught at certain ages. Um, and, you know, for some people that might seem really strict, um, but I think that that is the beauty of estate planning. It's that it's going to be different for every, everyone and the things that we consider to be valuable, the things that we consider to be an aspect of wealth that we pass on to the next generation um, will vary from person to person. But we still, you know, as I mentioned before, have that power to create documents that really reflect who we are as individuals. And I always keep her in mind because she, I honest, I've seen other people do that and, you know, worked with other clients who, you know, were um, leaving instructions for, you know, how they wanted their children to be cared for. But that client in particular was so detailed and she was passionate and she understood that, um, you know, you really don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't know if you're going to be able to raise your child until they're, you know, until they're well, you know, into old age. And so um, you plan for the unexpected. And uh, she really got, I was just so impressed with, I mean, she would just send me documents. Just like, okay, I want to add this. I want to add that. And I loved it. You know, it wasn't, it was one of the most fulfilling estate plans that I've done in my career. It's excellent. Cause it's also the, probably one of the most personal, right? She had the most Absolutely. personal Absolutely. things that she wanted to bring, especially for, that child, and and I've seen that with um, you know, with other people. Um, just so our listeners know and remember, once a month through LinkedIn, um, we have access. Um, both uh, uh, Stan Miller and his partner Katie Bath, they they put together a program literally once a month. And last month was on holidays and rituals, and and how to remember those and preserve those and and save them. And the same thing with um, you know with uh, with culture, right? I recently interviewed, um, I happen to be Jewish, and I recently interviewed um, a guest who was who was Jewish, and there's a whole different set of not only cultural values, but how they wanted it, you know, to be continued on um, in their particular situation, and so, um, so I, I think those are, are really important, and again, 
maybe those are the things that we can point to that will help a person get over the hump of uh, going in to get their estate planning done. Because for some people, it's like pulling teeth, right? And, right. and they'll, they'll, they'll put it off as, as long as they possibly can, or maybe, you know, it was too late, right? It was after right. a bit for that. Um, so anyway, I think that's um, all the questions that I have for you today. Is there anything else you'd like to, to share with our audience about estate planning or your practice in general? Um, you know, I always like to encourage people, uh, you have something worth planning for, no matter how small you might think it is, it is the size of a seed at least. And so if we think about estate planning as planting seeds that grow into trees, then uh, we can honor what we have and uh, plan accordingly. So everybody needs estate planning. It is for everyone, including you, whoever you may be. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I think that will wrap up today's um, session. I want to thank all of our listeners for being there and listening to your life, your legacy podcast with your guest host, Steve Sepp. And uh, our guest today, again, has been uh, Kristen J. Wilson, um, and she hails out of Arlington, Virginia, just outside of our, our nation's capital. And um, Christian, if somebody has heard something that really inspires them, or they're in the Washington or Virginia area, and they would like to contact you, what would be the best way to do that? Um, I can be reached at hello at kjwilsonlaw.com. Uh, you can also visit the website at www.kjwilsonlaw.com. And I am KJ Wilson Law on Instagram and Facebook. And you can also call 703 um, 278 All right. Excellent. Several different ways of getting a hold of uh, Kristen. And Kristen, again, thank you so much for being such a great guest and thank imparting you. so much information to our listeners. And uh, Look forward to, uh, to speaking with you again uh, in the future. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. It's been great. All right. Thank you. You've been listening to the Legacy Leaders Podcast with Katie Beth Hand and Stan Miller. For more information on them and the show, please visit PinnacleLegacyLaw.com. If you like what you've learned today, do share the program with your friends and subscribe wherever podcasts are found.